benefits of control. I, I don't think I suffer from stress. I, I don't work 100 hours a week. I control um, the amount of work that I do to make sure that um, I can continue to deliver long term. Control, the amount of control is intimately related to where you are in the occupational hierarchy. And what we have found is in general, where people report to us that things have got worse, that the amount of work stress has gone up, their illness rates go up. Where people report to us that they've got more control, they're being treated more fairly at work, there's more justice in the amount of treatment. So things are getting better, the amount of illness goes down. I've been very lucky. I, I haven't ever experienced any problems with my health. But not everyone is so lucky. So is there a prescription for the vast majority of us who aren't at the top? Give people more involvement in the work, give them more say in what they're doing, give them more reward for the amount of effort they put out. And it might well be you'll have not just a healthier workplace, but a more productive workplace as well. I've managed to achieve a degree of control. At the moment, I'm in a really good position. This is the first time where I feel I've had a boss who appreciates me. He doesn't dominate team meetings, he sits back. He invites people to contribute. He lets other people chair. He's a real manager. And he, from the start, when I returned after my latest sick leave just six months ago, he was so positive. I think I feel sufficiently empowered. Who would have imagined that Robert's baboons would point us humans towards a stress-free utopia? This may sound a little fanciful, but I think what we're trying to create is a better society. The implications, both of the baboons and of the British civil servants, is how can we create a society that has the conditions that allow people to flourish? And that's where this is heading, to create a better society that promotes human flourishing. So what do baboons teach the average person in there? Don't bite somebody because you're having a bad day. Don't displace them on them in any sort of manner. Social affiliation is a remarkably powerful thing. And that's said by somebody who lives in a world where ambition and drive and type A-ness and all of that sort of thing dominates. Those things are real important. And one of the greatest forms of sociality is giving rather than receiving. And all of those things make for a better world. Another one of the things that baboons teach us is if they're able to, in one generation, transform what are supposed to be textbook social systems sort of engraved in stone, we don't have an excuse when we say there's certain inevitabilities about human social systems. And so, the haunting question that endures from Robert's life work. Are we brave enough to learn from a baboon? The Kikarok troop didn't just survive without stress. They thrived. Can we? Order Stress, Portrait of a Killer, on DVD. Call PBS Home Video at 1-800-PLAY-PBS or visit us online at shoppbs.org.